Hey, it's Marco here from Fair Realty. Today I'm talking about uh, the BC government introducing a rent cap on rent increases for 2023 at 2%. In my opinion, this is a very bad policy, very counterproductive, it's absolutely terrible. Let me qualify all of this by saying I'm a landlord. I've had uh, some of my uh, rental properties for more than 10 years now. Never have I ever given a rent increase to an existing tenant. I readjust my rents and the re-rents, but if my tenants are paying rent, they're not causing me problems, which knock on wood has been all of my tenants in all of these years, I do not increase rent. If you're an existing tenant, past tenant, or know someone that was a tenant of mine that I gave a rent increase to, post it in the comments section because I know I haven't. So I think this policy is a horrible idea coming from someone who's never ever given a rent increase. The government is simply playing musical chairs here. We're not solving any tangible problems. Why are rents so high? It's very simple. I took Economics 101 at UVic in 2007 or 8. I wasn't the brightest student, but I understand very basic concepts. There is more demand than supply. So basically more people want to live in Victoria than we have housing. Therefore, rents keep going up. So instead of the government tackling tangible problems such as why does it take two, three, five years for a rezoning application? Why does someone have to fight NIMBYs over stupid issues? Why is there so much bureaucracy in every municipality at the city hall level? If it takes five years to rezone and then another two years to build an apartment, that's seven years. What kind of an incentive does a developer or investor have to go through the pain of doing that for seven years only when the apartment building is finished for rents to be capped at 2% when inflation is 7.6. Investors are gonna say, screw this, I'm not gonna do anything, I'm just gonna sit on my money. What does that lead to? Less supply, rents go up even higher. Also, by fixing the cap at such a low amount at 2%, you get tenants and they stay in places for a very long time, which is fine for those tenants, but it decreases supply for other tenants that have to outbid each other on units that are available at market value. So you actually put other people in a much worse position. Million other problems with this. For example, I'm a landlord. Last year I had a condo come up for rent that I own downtown. I had a tenant move out after 10 years. The place needed some work. I was really busy with my other businesses. So instead of doing any improvements to this unit, I simply decided to leave it as is and rent it to someone with a dog. Normally I would go in, paint, fix the flooring. I like my properties to present well. But if I'm not able to increase the rent at a reasonable amount, what incentive do I have to maintain a property to any sort of degree? I don't because I'm way below inflation on what I can increase the rent. It's actually my incentive if the tenant moves out so what am I going to do as the landlord? I'm simply not going to maintain the property, which is going to decrease the quality of the housing stock. Overall, I think this is a terrible idea. The optics of this idea that the government hopes are, let's help out the poor tenants, the deserving tenants, and let's punish the greedy landlords. However, it's very counterproductive. All we're gonna do with this type of policy is end up with less supply. We're gonna place some musical chairs on who gets to live in Victoria, who doesn't, at what prices. Long-term, we're gonna have less supply, which is gonna force prices even higher. Let's deal with real problems. They're gonna create for real solutions in terms of more supply instead of playing musical chairs. That's it for this week. Marco Jurass, Fair Realty.